Hey everybody, and welcome back to the sales. Co oh, what's the um? What episode is this? One fifty six. One fifty six. Okay. Yes. Um. Cool. I think I put the right number in, but if I didn't, it is what you it did. is. Okay. Cool. So, is it the right number because I put it in, or did I put in the right number? Put in the right number. <laughs> Remember, this is our. If you if you do the math, this is three years of fifty two weeks of podcast. One fifty six. Wow. Okay. So here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Sales Copyright and Content Marketing Hacks podcast. I'm your host, along with my trusty co-host, Mr. Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Hello, Jim. We have reached a momentous milestone, an m and &M, a momentous milestone. Today is podcast episode 156. Those of you who can do math at home without your iPhone will realize that Three times 52 is 156, which means we have just completed three years worth of weekly podcasts. And it took us a little longer than that because we've had vacation, holidays, and uh, miscounting a few times in there. But 156 podcast episodes, that is quite the achievement. And I think we have had a few downloads. Yeah, so that's, that's a good thing good. either. Bravo, sir. That's three so, years of content. That is. So that's a good thing, Martha. Okay, enough of that. So we are talking about spring because spring has sprung. Yes. And our topic today is what, Stu? Spring training. Spring training. What's that so mean? It, 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 play ball. Yeah. It's spring Come training. Spring training. So, so for you and your business, you know, how, how can you apply some of the things that you may have learned in previous life of springtime coming, you know, getting ready for the rest of the year? Because that's really, if you think about spring, this is really the new year focus. People yeah. really focus on the rest of the year starting in spring. Okay. You know, I've always thought that the best New Year's resolution would be a, if we could just wait three months and do it on spring. Because everybody wants to get in shape for the summer when it's springtime. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. So they could get a three-month head start if they started January 1st, but that's okay. We can start into springtime. We can start 1st of April as well. Okay. I agree. Um, so if I was going to think of, okay, if you think of spring training, what is spring training? Spring training is, if you think of it from a sports analogy, it's refocusing on, let me give myself some rooms, um, but it's fundamentals. Yep. It's building habits. Hmm. All right. And... It's a lot of practice to get better. It's also, Jim, uh -huh. you have an opportunity to learn something new as well. Ooh. All right. Learn new stuff. I think it's also a, a time of new beginnings where Absolutely. you can slough off the old. Yep. Okay. So if we were going to apply this to our business, what would we do? You know, if we talk about fundamentals, one of the things is to really take a look at what works in your business and what doesn't. Honestly, I yeah. mean, it's, 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 we will do the stuff that works and we'll do the stuff the, the thing what's what's the saying in the military that you revert to the lowest level of your training or yep. whatever it is yep. so you don't you don't um you don't seed expectations or you yeah you don't rise to the occasion you fall back to your lowest level of training okay so <clears throat> focusing on fundamentals i think would be uh, a, a smart thing to do. What works? What what could you recommit to or start developing the habit to do in your business? Uh, I tell everybody, you know, one of the smartest things you could do is is spend 
30 to 45 minutes a day, creating value for your audience and leveraging that value to bring new people into your audience. That's, that's the, the smartest thing you could do that will pay dividends forever. Um, that, that right there. I mean, if we're talking about fundamentals, it's create value, distribute value. It's, it's what we talk about in content marketing it is basically, you know, identifying who your audience is, coming up with cool ideas uh, to share value with them, consistently creating great content every single day. You don't have to do webinars. You can do two, three minutes worth of stuff and then systematically distributing it, spending time connecting with people, bringing people into your uh, into your sphere of influence and then concentrating on monetizing the whole process. If you just focused on those fundamentals every single day, that's kind of, you could do all of that in under an hour, all of that in under an hour. So, you know, those, those fundamentals, you know, what, what are the fundamentals of online business? Generating leads, making sales and providing value to people. Again, that's it. Those Everything else is just complicating one of those or, or falls under one of those three headings or categories. Know what I mean? Yep. Hey, Jim, so, something about those fundamentals that I learned from you uh -huh. that I wanted to add, and, and it required kind of dissecting your day a little bit. Yeah. And Too and early? And seeing where. <laughs> Yum. Yeah. Um, and just dissecting your day in a way where, because you made a statement a while back ago that said you're never going to get rich doing ten dollar an hour work. You can't make five hundred dollars an hour doing ten dollar an hour yeah, work or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember exact quote, but anyway, that struck me because I was, you know, I, and what I have really strived to do all of last year and into this year was take away all those little hours that I was doing $10 an hour work, right? Like doing Lulu Express. So now I don't have to input orders, you know, and, and ship books. You know, I don't ship any books now. It's all automated. You know, all of those things, you know, has taken, you know, significant amount of low income time away from my business. And that that was a fundamental change that uh, really has been paying off. Did that impact your profitability at all as well? Did, did are you, in other words, are you making more money or less money or the same money by having loot? But I'm just totally curious as a side. Yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, overall, yeah, I'm paying a little more to get that done versus my time. But you're not doing it. But I'm not doing it. However, right. I'm able to market more and spend more time really nailing down my message, you know, whether it comes from all the social media platforms, newsletters, emails, you know, all of those things when it comes to, you know, the marketing of what that work. And that is paying, like I said, paying dividends. I'm putting more time into that versus... Sure filling out addresses in a you know stamps.com because that's that's a five hundred dollar an hour activity as opposed to a ten dollar an hour activity and that was eating up how much of your time every single day oh at least a couple hours yeah you know i mean in big busy days it could be more than that yeah so you know? minimum let's say average two hours a day five days a week 50 days 50 you weeks a year that's 500 hours and if you're making 500 bucks an hour, 500 times 500 is 250,000? Yeah. No, or 25,000. I don't know. See, my math ain't all Yeah, it's good. up there. It's up I mean, there. Anyway, I mean, it's more than $10 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> times 50, 500. 500 yeah. times 500 is 250,000. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it's, it's scary. That's a scary figure. And even if it was, only, even if, let's say it was only half of that. Let's say you're making 250 bucks an hour now. That's 125,000. Let's say you're only making 100 bucks an hour. That's yeah. $50,000 in effort that you don't have to put out that you can put into other stuff because that's an expense. That's not a, that, that, that wasn't, 
you know, that's a time expense. That is your time expense. You can't make money. So that, that should be tr treated, create, treated as an expense. Yeah. Like I said, um, that is about as fundamental as it gets in a business. But see, that's one of those one things that changes multiple things. Yeah. That's like, you know, rearranging your stuff so you get your workout done first as opposed to getting going and then it doesn't then it then it gets shortchanged or it gets put off or all this other stuff. But then when you got your workout done, then and the whole rest of the day is great because you're doing everything guilt free, not hey, I gotta hurry up and get this done so I can go work out and then all this other stuff. Yeah. At least for me. Yeah. So, you know, but then building habits, what kind of habits would you think people should build this year for their spring training. Um, well, if you change your fundamentals, you're going to find more time perhaps to build new habits. Mm -hmm. You might have um, the ability to fit new habits in, or you just go back to the fundamental, the fundamentals and, cr you know, reestablish those old habits that you know that are working for you. So, um, I wrote an article probably 15 years ago called Hidden Profits in Spare Change Time. And the article was basically about how we bleed huge amounts of time over the course of a day transitioning from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. So if you have like, I don't know, looking at this particular day, I've got, you know, we're doing the podcast, then I have a thing that we're doing after this. And then there's like a, a 40 minute lag time until lunch. And then after lunch, there's another thing. And then I have a meeting and then I have another meeting and then I have like a, a blank spot. And those, those blank spots of like 15 minutes here or 20 minutes there or 40 minutes here, 10 minutes there, a lot of times those get unused. It's kind of like coins in your pocket that just kind of get thrown in the ashtray in the car. I guess they don't have ashtrays in cars anymore, but, but you know, or it stays in your pocket or you throw it in a jar. It's like in 15, 20 different places. But if you took all of that change and you kept it in the change jar, all of a sudden, pretty soon it fills up pretty fast. Now, this is before the COVID national coin shortage and all that other stuff where, you know, please use exact change because of the coin shortage. How the hell did COVID cause a coin shortage, Stu? I don't know, Jim. I don't, I don't understand that one. I, do, I honestly don't. I probably get shut down for even mentioning the name, you know, in the podcast. It's, I don't understand how COVID caused a coin shortage. Were people eating coins trying to get over COVID? You know, this went along with, I, I, I don't know. The one thing I learned from COVID is I just, I'm, I think I'm an introvert. <laughs> and if you weren't, you I, became one. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed not having somewhere to go. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. But then like, but then like going to the grocery store became like a survival horror movie. Oh, you're yeah, like, yeah. okay, I got 12 and a half minutes to go in and get these 30 things. And I'm going to go. I mean, I knew exactly where to go, the thing to grab. And I could hold my breath in like three minute increments and get my heart rate up to about 100 beats a minute and, and still be okay. So I can get through this grocery store on six breaths, 12 minutes, 65 bucks. Let's do this. And then I'm like timing myself. I, I, I went early in the morning. No one oh, yeah. was even there. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you go like at four or five in the afternoon, you're screwed. Yeah. So you're, yeah. You go first thing in the morning. Yeah. And you, you, the only person you're competing for clean air with is the dude running the floor buffer. Um, so my point, though, is that building the habit, instead of just going over to Facebook when you've got 10 or 15 minutes or going over to, you know, or checking your email for the 50th time or screwing around on your phone, looking at Google news or something to kill time. See how many of those develop the habit of seeing how many of those little spots of spare, spare change time that you could use to get something done. So I'll give you an example this morning. I needed to, Susan sends me assignments. Susan runs the business. 
Nancy is her cohort. I just do what they say. Um, but she sent me, I need a thing for Friday. She gave me the idea. So I, when I went on my walk to warm up, I talked it out into Otter. And then I'm like, okay, sometime I'm going to, I got to get this edited. But I had time between one thing this morning, I had like 12 minutes. And I said, I wonder if I can get this thing edited in 12 minutes. Let me just get this thing edited. And sure enough, I got it edited in like 11 minutes. So I sent it to her um, and got it done. And so this is one of the, the biggest things. Like if you getting on content marketing scripts or something or getting in the Jim Edwards method and then using a wizard or using a script, it's like, hey, I got 15 minutes right now. Let me go use like the word of the day script. Let me go use this. Let me just do that real quick and, and just bang this thing out and go post it on to um, post it on the social media and then load it into the content distribution software. And, and let me see if I can get that done. And, and you would be amazed with that focus, with a little micro deadline at how much stuff you can get done during the day, where that those things that are on your to-do list, and I'm pointing at it over here on my whiteboard, um, the things on your to-do list that, that like haunt you, that you can get done faster than you think. We spend more time thinking about the things we're supposed to get done than we do actually doing them more time getting ready to get ready to get ready instead of just doing them. So that that would be the something that I'm recommitting to, rebuilding the habit of of really maximizing those those things. And then when I'm not working, not worrying about working, like not checking email on my phone. You know, when it's done, it's done. And when it's on, it's on. That, that kind of a thing. I think that's my big spring training fundamental building habit stuff. That's gonna. That's really what I'm going to focus on this year. Can I sit back down? Sure. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. So, um, well, we ought to bring the girls on real quick and and see what they want to do this. Uh, well, we still for, got a couple for... more on that list of uh, oh. spring training. Okay. Not quite well, done yet. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, what would you let's let's <laughs> I talked about these first two. You can catch the last three. Yours was the thing about new beginnings and learning new talk about learning new stuff, Stu. What's new stuff you want to learn now? Well, you know, chicken I, and waffles. Um <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's gonna be my new t shirt. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Chicken okay. and waffles. Yeah. On Sunday. Like I said, chicken and rice sells. Why not chicken and waffles? No, I'm uh yeah, I'm just playing around with some apparel ideas. Um, not that I'm coming up with my own uh Article you know, fifteen black yeah, rifle coffee stuff. Yeah, I'm not coming up with my own uh what what do you call it? Like clothing not line. Um but I'm going to definitely have some fun t-shirts along the way. And I think they're going to be related to my seasonal transitions throughout the year. So like spring, calisthenics and cardio, you know, not sure what summer or fall will bring, but we'll, uh, we'll come up to it. Winter lift cycle. You know, just. No, nah, that winter lift cycle doesn't work, dude. No, no, you don't think so? Like nah. I said, I, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, stay on top of what might be popular. So what it what it what it enables me to do is just keep an open mind, open eyes, open ears and just observe any new changes, any new um whether it's technology or it's just trends, any new trends, it's enabling me to stay in that mindset versus just keep doing the same old thing over and over again and wonder why it's not working. <clears throat> right. Well, that's that you just you just talked about evolving. You can't evolve if you're not learning. You yeah. you can't evolve if you're not observing and seeing what's going on. And and I think that's part of that's a fundamental that I think we all could use a little bit more of even though I just said, "Hey, you need to fill every you know, try and maximize every moment, but you still have to make time for 
I'm not going to say contemplating your navel, but you should spend some time on introspection and observation and, and notice, okay, what's working, what's not working. And I did a lot of that while I was on my staycation of, of just staring at my calendar and looking for um, trends, looking for where time was going and, and why was it going there and what was I thinking I was going to accomplish and being more, you know, how could I be more strategic with the stuff that I'm doing to be able to, you know, do one plus one equals five instead of one plus, you know, one times one <laughs> is, is still one. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a lot of what I've been doing because you, you go through the motions or you're just like, OK, let me just show up and get this done as opposed to, hey, let me be a little bit better prepared. Let me show up. Let me get this done and then let me use this in a whole bunch of other ways, uh, which is just just a little bit of introspection and planning can make a huge difference. Hey, uh, Peter asks about talking it out in Otter. He just asked you what what that was. So, uh, Otter Otter AI is a service that does uh, automated transcription, and I think it costs like two hundred and fifty bucks a year for the uh, for the pro level. You get six thousand minutes a month. Um, Damn. But but they. So we use that to transcribe pretty much everything that we do. And when I do coaching sessions or things like that, you can have it automatically transcribe your Zoom meetings. So that's a cool value add. You say, hey, you know, you'll get a you'll get the recording of the thing, plus you'll get the transcript right away. People are like, oh, that's really cool. Um, but they also have an app and uh, the Otter app is is really cool because I can turn on the Otter app and I can make notes. But as I'm making notes, not only is it recording the audio, but it's also transcribing it in real time. So what I'll do is get all my thoughts out on a particular thing and then I'll download, I can download it as a DOCX file and then I can edit it into an article. Nice. And and so or a blog post or a newsletter article or something like that. So that's one of the things that we'll do is I'll use one of the wizards inside of content marketing scripts or the Jim Edwards method premium. I'll create a uh, script. I'll talk it out, shove it over into Otter. Otter will transcribe it. And so then I can. Uh, you know, take it from there. So it's it's just, it's a really cool, I think it's too cheap. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not telling them that to raise their prices, but, you know, 250 bucks to, to have what that does as opposed to like rev.com, which charges 10 cents a minute or something or more, 20 yeah. cents a minute for- Rev is expensive. Yeah. So it's it's the, the automated transcription on Otter is just as good as the automated transcription on Rev. Nice. So- um, you know, it, it, the more I use it, the more I can do stuff or, you know, I'll just get on. And sometimes one of the coolest things you can do is just kind of talk things out. Like just talk, talk out something like you were talking to somebody on the phone. And then I'll listen back to my thoughts at one and a half times speed. And then that'll get me thinking. So it creates a whole new mental feedback loop. And then typically what will happen is I'll, I'll make some more notes that will clarify everything that I just did or talked about. So I mean, I've, I've come up with a lot of cool ideas and a lot of cool content doing that process. And it's good for about a two mile walk. You oh, know, amen. If, if you're walking at about a 16 minute, I've, I've found my best pace is about a 16 to 17 minute mile pace. If you if you get down to 14, 15, you're you're more worried about how fast you're walking. Um, but then so what I'll do is I'll talk it out on the way out for about a mile, and then I'll listen to it at one and a half speed on the way back, and then I'll clarify, I'll do a second recording and do all the clarification and everything. Nice. And uh it's 
it's a pretty neat little system. Well, the cool thing what you did there is one, you learned a new thing. So Peter's learned about Otter, right? So you've learned how to use Otter. You've right. applied it to your fundamentals. You've added this habit of talking into other habits of walking. Right. Right. And now it's it's enabling you to save a lot of time and evolve in your other things. Well, you know, so anyway, there's a whole lot of of that list that you just described that you are doing just by, you know, that that one little function. And interestingly enough. That. Tying that walking time to being productive in my business and to being able to, to think things through and do all that and tying that to money and, and all the other stuff really helped me to stay walking, especially this past January and February when it was like really cold outside and I didn't have an indoor gym with a, um, you know, with a treadmill or something. That motivated me. It's like, okay, I got to get on my stuff and I got to get outside because I got to walk through. I got to, I literally got to walk and talk through all this stuff and I got to get this done. Plus it distracted me from the fact that it was like 25 degrees out with, with, you know, 30 mile an hour winds. So, um, anyway, there you go. Awesome. Um, so there you go. All right. So. That's it for the podcast. If you're not a member of the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks group on Facebook, you should be because it's amazing. <laughs> Head on over there and join. Got over 25,000 people in there, and they're actually pretty nice folks who will help you out with some stuff. But remember, as with any group, you need to give to get. So if you want feedback, give feedback. If you want answers to your question, answer other people's questions. And that's how we keep the whole process going. So uh, anything else to add on this topic, Stu? Uh, no. I, my biggest thing is, is just make today day one, not one day. Absolutely. Start that's today. Good, I love that. And that's make today the day you look back on a year from now and say, wow, I'm really glad I got started instead of the day you wish you'd gotten started and then you're still trying to get started because that sucks. All right. Good job, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.